Hello, true duelists. My name is Craig Fee, and as always, welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Update. At long last, there is finally something to shake up the format for the first time since February 13th enacted our current ban list. Because the release of Cyberstorm Access has, at long last, and I cannot stress that enough, given me something else to talk about in regards to the meta. Granted, it's not like any of the previously good decks have gotten any worse. There's just now two new big threats that we already knew were going to be good that are also now in the format. So, hey, it's change. And Manadium still exists, too. Matter of fact, Manadium Primart has a special defensive ability that stops your opponent from targeting it with card effects. <laughs> the joke's dead already, and I, 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 yet I still love it. Yes, looking at some of the regional tops from this past weekend, you'll see that Super Heavy Samurai seemed primed, get it, to be the best of the new decks, getting the most tops of the three new archetypes to come out of Cyberstorm Access, and in one event in particular, even getting half of the top eight slots. Pearly did less well, although was still able to make one top or two at each event, broadly speaking. It did well in a number of regionals from what I can find, and Manadium only really got one top that I was able to locate. I guess the deck needs to make better use of its multiple energy blades. Also making new appearances was, of course, Gold Pride Punk deck, because, well... It's, it's got to show up, right? I think it would be much funnier if it would be a bad deck because that would fit with my initial video going over the new cards when they were released back in the previous set, Photon Hypernova, but I, that's, it, it got one top at a regional, so it's at least good enough for that. All in all, it made for a interesting new look at our current format and add some fresh air to the new decks to learn to hate. That being said, Cast Hero was still topping consistently, and as a matter of fact, it won the same event that Super Heavy Samurai had got four tops at, so the deck's still good, and it really does just fuck over just about everything else, so is it really surprising that it's still being played and being played well? Keeping things getting spicy, today's look at the Spice Watch is fittingly done by a white guy because there's nothing about this that is all that spicy in the least. I just wanted to find something to talk about that's not pearly or super heavy or cash tear up. So how about runic? Is that spicy for you? Are you enticed? If you've played on Master Duel like two months ago, probably not at all. But hey, this time around, I can talk about Plunder Patrol cards as well, because that's the other half of the deck this time around. Not Naturia, not Fur Hire, not even Sprite. It's Plunder Patrol time. I'm the captain now. And with this 54-card deck, we managed to get top eight at a regional. Now, that is some spice. Imagine losing to a 54-card Plunder Patrol deck. No disrespect to the pilot, I'm just saying, if I have to conduct, construct, conduct scenarios that are pretty oof, I'd say that's one of them. This is in part because it also played an adventurer package as well, and main deck Droll and Lockbirds, because that's a staple for this format, because spoiler alert, this format kind of sucks sometimes. Beyond that, it seemed to be exactly what it is you expect from a mix of both Plunder Patrol and Runic, with the added main deck Lava Golems and Rivalry of Warlords for that extra bit of disrespect. The lengths rogue decks must go to to be playable sometimes makes my soul weep. Still, congratulations to Pilot Hunter Lloyd for the top eight. That's no small feat, and may God have mercy on your soul. And speaking of Master Duel, because I mentioned it like two minutes ago and we all forgot about it, but I don't care. I'm forcing this joke and making it work. This week brought us another update to the game, giving players a new set of missions under the new Discovery category, offering rewards of gems, icons, and more for basically doing the absolute bare minimum in regard to playing Master Duel. But hey... Free gems are free gems. Also, more excitingly, is the Road to Worlds campaign, also under the missions column when going to unlock your rewards, requiring you to only log in on six separate days between now and June 30th. And that's the key to being a world champion, of course, is just logging in. Doing this will give everyone ultimately a Royal Finish Blackwing Full Armor Master to accompany the new Blackwing Structure deck that they're giving us available for 500 gems. That's probably more worthwhile than crafting a Zephros by itself, right? Sure hope so. That's how I'm justifying it. And lastly is the new selection pack, Synchronized Cosmos, featuring Naturia cards, Ice Jade cards, some new Fur Hire cards, and of course, the Goatee archetype. 
And more importantly is the new Assault Synchron, which is an absolutely nutter butter card, let me tell you. That's, that's the main cool thing coming out of this set, don't at me. These and the new sleeves and icons and trinkets are all available now, and all completely irrelevant, of course, because Master Duel is still in tier limits format. Maybe next month they'll address it properly. But hey, at least they banned Instant Fusion, right? Talk about some copium. Also this week, we had reveals for new Salome and Great Support from the upcoming Legendary Duelist Soul Burning Volcano set, and we also got revealed some new Earthbound support of sorts from the anime. And if that isn't enough, Dandelion went and got his ass gentrified, and Dandy White Lion effects are now known and public to the world. And I've covered all of them in these week's new card reports. Links are here if you're interested, and if not, well then fuck you. And I I'm moving on from this segment anyways, I'm done, so the joke was on you as well. Ha <laughs> ha, I win. In community news, in a win for everyone and me especially, Yugipedia has announced that it will now be reopening public editing, which I choose to believe will never be abused at all. No, I do have faith that we can repair it fully in short time, and I can't wait to be able to fix the banlist history charts because single card history videos are much easier when I can look up the cards and when they were hit without acknowledging the existence of the damn wikia. So there you go. That's the news. It's fuck wikias. And goddammit, fuck web p files. Hate those things. And most importantly for this week, the ban list. The community seemingly decided that we need a ban list, and it also decided that our collective sanity is tied entirely to us receiving it. The Konami TCG Twitter has become the place that ban lists get dropped first, and as such, every time it makes a tweet that is not the ban list, a part of the community's collective consciousness is utterly destroyed. Or that's what's happening to our total brain cell count at the very least, because they had just dropped a vicious Astrolaud tweet the same way they did for Manadium Primeheart, and once again, Twitter exploded. I hate that I've said that, but really, if you didn't know any better, you'd swear they tweeted out something like, Vicious Astrolaud always makes a dramatic entrance, powering themselves up by destroying one other monster on the field and absorbing half their energy. Vicious Astrolaud might be out of this world, but you can find them in Cyberstorm Access out now. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, it, it, it never stops entertaining me, because the simplest fix in the world is of course announcing a date in any capacity, as opposed to this absolute void of no information that we find ourselves in. We don't even have an explicit reason to really be expecting a ban list right now. It's just apparent that we've all decided now is the time and now is the time now, Konami. And our only solution is harassing their Twitter accounts. Hell, I even tried to bait Konami last week because I filmed that update at 2 in the morning on Thursday, giving Konami ample time to fuck me over by just releasing it. And yet they didn't. That's pretty sus. Now, the trouble we're in is, of course, that we're in national season. National events are happening, and as a matter of fact, there are two YCSs coming up this month. First in Santiago, one week from today on May 20th and 21st, and another in Philadelphia the week following on the 27th and 28th. And as of now, there's no reason to expect that these two events will not be playing under the current format we're in now. Still, until slash unless we were to get a ban list, you can expect YouTubers and streamers to be milking it for all it's worth. Like, real talk, last week's update was one of the most successful ones I've ever made. It's like number four or five overall out of every one of these weekly ass videos so sorry not sorry but it's clearly what the people want to watch and i'm just a discount news channel it's called a hook baby you call it a clickbait but i get to call it a hook and now, now i'm cool now <laughs> is there any other community news do people care about like 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 should i be talking about how gage like i guess cheated in his progression series polls last year two years ago you know, re-rolling until he got two reborn Tengu. Is that important to you? How about someone creating a, I think that's a Facebook page thing. I, 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 don't, I don't use it anymore. I don't know. That's, let's just call it Facebook. I'm retconning it. Someone making a Facebook profile named Mathmex Circular and then sending Joshua Schmidt a friend request. <laughs> I mean, that's funny, but is it news? Is that the shit that you care about? I'm just thinking out loud here. Trust me, I have zero intentions on becoming... Yu-Gi-Oh's Keemstar outside of an April Fool's video. Uh, just, mm, this is my passive-aggressive way of informing you of these two uh, pieces of information that are now in my brain. I don't know. 
The only intention I truly have is telling you about today's sponsor. Yes, thanks as always go to LIFD for sponsoring the update and my channel with this promo code for their magnetic card displays. The best way to support the channel currently and the best place to put your dandy white lion in a cage where his gentrified ass belongs. Yep, I'm making the same joke twice. It's called taking the rule of threes and not applying it. Yeah, either way, this is a great way to show off your favorite cards and at a discounted price. You can type in my promo code YGOSTRATS15 at the checkout, or you can click the link in the description to have it apply automatically. Thanks to LIFD for the support as always, and thank you for watching. And so that'll wrap it up for this week's update. As always, I've been your host, Gregory Feganite. Nothing different this week, folks. Nothing different at all. So go ahead and subscribe if you want more of exactly this. Or if you want to impress your smoking Italian wife, or most of all, hit subscribe so that you can certifiably become a true duelist. Oh, my God. I am 56 years old.